The movie begins in Southeast Asia, where a group of soldiers take their positions in the woods, waiting for their target to arrive. They use their sniper rifles to track down a building, which is supposedly housing an illegal company. The company poses as saviors of children, but instead engages in illegal organ smuggling. Here, we get to know that the soldiers are from the Chinese army, and they are there to bring the company down. One of the soldiers, named Jin Meng, is assigned with the main task of executing the target, Song Pa, who is the leader of the Salvation Society. However, he gets distracted when he notices the innocent children, who are held up against their will. Ming wants to rescue the children, but his teammate reminds him of their mission, of executing the target rather than saving people. As Ming is busy conversing with his teammate, one of the boys in the building picks up a glass bottle, looks through it, and spots him from over a mile away. Ming is left stunned as to how the boy could see him despite his perfect position. After a while, they learn that Song Pa is on his way to the headquarters. Meanwhile, Ming maintains his focus on the boy and sees that he is being taken to the operating room. The innocent boy is about to undergo a dangerous surgery to extract his heart. When Ming notices this, he quickly changes his position. Seeing this, his teammate becomes enraged, fearing that they might fail their mission. Right then, Song Pa arrives, just as the boy is about to undergo surgery. As a result, Ming is torn between saving the boy and executing his target. In the end, he decides to save the boy and fires at the man who is going to operate on him. When Song Pa hears the shooting, he immediately returns to the car, but Ming manages to shoot him in his shoulder. Following this, Song Pa's men begin shooting in all directions, killing innocent children. The armies are able to defeat the enemies, but the mission fails because their target has escaped. Ming then saves the boy and decides to raise him on his own. However, his teammates accuse him, claiming that Song Pa will now kill more people. Ten years later, we meet a man named Jin Tai, who is honing his sniper skills. Jin Tai is revealed to be the same boy who was rescued by Ming previously, and he is now one of the best snipers in his army batch. The next day, Jin Tai is training with his fellow comrades. The session is led by none other than the veteran sniper Min. Jin Tai goes through rigorous training and showcases his exemplary skills. However, he always loses to the best sniper in the batch, Xiao Mei. It turns out that Xiao was also rescued from the same location as Jin Tae and raised by Ming. In the next scene, Jin Tae is finally rewarded for his hard work, and he is tasked with the mission of killing Song Pa. When Xiao Mei finds out about this the next day, she confronts Ming, asking why he dispatched Jin Tae instead of her, but Ming remains silent. On the other hand, we see Jin Tae, who has already taken his sniper position and is watching the enemy's movements. In the monitoring room, Captain Wong informs Ming that they have failed to execute Song Pa seven times. He also suspects that someone in their organization is a Salvation Society spy. As they are discussing this, Jin Tae and his team are spotted by the enemies. In no time, they are attacked, and Ming orders Jin Tae to abort the mission. He also realizes that Wong was correct all along. At the same time, Song Pa's men jam their communication and monitoring channels, making it impossible for them to give orders to their soldiers. However, from Ming's communication line, he gets a faint signal. There, Jin Tae mentions that he will not retreat, as he doesn't want Song Pa to kill more people. Left with no options, Ming decides to send another team, led by Xiao Mei. However, Captain Wong refuses to let the team leave until the spy is apprehended. According to the captain, their intelligence has been leaked, and no matter how how many men they send, the enemies will only act as live targets. This sparks a heated debate between Ming and Wang. A short time later, their connection reappears, and Jin Tai informs them that the area is clear, but Song Pa was not present there. Jin Tai then replays the footage to show how he accomplished the mission successfully. After this, Captain Wang directs Jin Tai to look for evidence. Jin Tai obliges, and after a bit of searching, he discovers a laptop containing information on the sale of illegal weapons, drugs, and human human organs. While investigating further, he discovers a photograph of Ming, casting doubt on everyone's belief that Ming is the spy. Ming attempts to defend himself, but Wang orders Xiao Mei to apprehend him. Ming is disappointed that despite his 30 years of service, he is still not trusted. As Xiao Mei is about to withdraw Ming's gun, the real spy shoots Ming. Fortunately, Xiao Mei saves him, and chaos ensues. It turns out that not one, but several men from the base were all working for Song Pa. Meanwhile, Jin Tai hears the commotion and immediately rushes to rescue his people. Back at the base, Xiao Mei helps Ming fight against the perpetrators. After a while, Jin Tai arrives at the scene and discovers the dead bodies of his department members. He also comes
comes across a dying Wang, who informs him that Ming and Xiao Mei are the real traitors. Hearing this, Jin Tai is shocked, but before he can take any action, Ming points a gun at him. Ming tells Jin Tai to stand down, as he is not the culprit, but the latter is skeptical. As a result, the duo engages in a professional fight. A few moments later, Xiao Mei joins in on the action, and just when Jin Tai shoots at her, Ming comes in between and takes the hit. Meanwhile, Song Pa arrives at the army base and destroys the building with a bazooka. Cut to eight years later. We see Jin Tai, who has now become broke after failing his mission to assassinate Song Pa. One night, as he is wandering around, a little boy named Feng suddenly runs up to him, with a horde of men chasing him for stealing money. Feng addresses the beggar as Dad, and this prompts the thugs to go after Jin Tai and snatch his money. Following this, Jin Tai takes Feng to his mother, Min, who works as an escort in a bar. Jin Tai asks that his money be returned, but Min is unable to do so. As a result, Jin Tai takes Feng to work for him until he is paid back. After a while, he brings the little kid to his place and instructs him to not steal again. From the following day, Jin Tai and Feng begin their work of collecting used goods, repairing them, and reselling them. He also makes the boy read and write like the other children. A few days later, Min visits Jin Tai's house to see her son. She is glad to see her son studying, but when Feng notices a bruise on her eye, he realizes she has been beaten by her customers. Feng then borrows some money from Jin Tai and gives it to his mother, asking that she take a few days off. Later, as Jin Tai and Min dine together, the latter reveals that she was forced into the profession to take care of her son. Meanwhile, the little kid discovers a secret box inside Jin Tai's room and opens it. There, he notices a deadly sniper rifle. But before he can inspect further, Jin Tai arrives and closes the box. Feng suspects that Jin Tai is a killer or a cop, a butcher or a pig, but Jin does not reveal anything to him. In the following scene, we see an old man dining in a lavish room. He is none other than Ming. Soon after, Xiao Mei approaches him and informs him that they have found someone whose blood type matches his. The movie then flashes back eight years ago, where Xiao Mei takes Ming to the doctor after he is shot. Ming survives, but according to the doctor, his wound is fatal, and he will need a heart transplant every three to five years. The doctor also claims that Ming has a rare blood type, which will make his survival difficult. Just then, Song Pa enters the operating room and reveals that Ming has always been his lapdog. As soon as Xiao Mei hears this, she decides to shoot Ming, but she is reminded of the time when Ming saved her, causing her to reconsider. Simultaneously, Ming regains consciousness and advises Xiao Mei to make her own decision. After a bit of thinking, she decides to execute Song Pa, but her leg is shot by Song Pa's troops. When all hope seems to be lost, a man named Long infiltrates the place and takes down all of Song Song Pa's men with his deadly moves. After this, Ming takes over Song Pa's business, with Xiao Mei and Long as his assistants. In the present, Feng returns with food, drinks, and money. Jin Tai believes he has stolen money again, so he chastises the little boy and kicks him out of his house. A short time later, he recalls the blood on Feng's hand and realizes that he earned the money by donating blood. He runs up to Feng and tries to stop him, but just then, Long and his men kidnap the little boy. Jin Tai tries his best to save the little boy, but fails. Following this, he heads to the blood center and finds Fang's data. He also beats up the doctor for information and finds out that the blood is being sent to the World Rescue Organization. In the next scene, Jin Tai arrives at the organization disguised as a staff member. Inside, he discovers several dead bodies, except for Fang's, indicating that he is still alive. Just then, the lab doctor approaches him from behind and injects a sedative into his neck. When Jin Tai turns around, he he recalls that he is the same doctor who was about to operate on him in the past. Enraged, he beats up the doctor and threatens him to reveal Fang's location. However, before the man can say anything, Xiao Mei shoots him to death. He discovers that she is in the other building, targeting him with a sniper. Luckily, before she can cause any damage, Jin Tai manages to escape the room. However, he is soon encountered by Long and his men. Jin Tai successfully eliminates several men and comes across Long. The two engage in a professional and fierce fight, but Jintai's body becomes weakened due to the sedative, causing
causing him to fall from the top floor. Despite this, he manages to return home, where Min treats his wounds. Min is devastated to learn of Feng's kidnapping, but Jintai assures her that her son will be returned. After some time, he puts on his soldier outfit and gets ready for war. In the next scene, using the help of Min, Jintai draws Long out and shoots him in the arm, all whilst being more than a mile away. He then chases the thug and eventually corners him. Terrified, Long accepts to help and takes him to a place where many children are detained. Following this, Jintai eliminates Long in front of the building's computer operator and orders him to hack into the World Rescue Organization's accounts. Elsewhere, when Xiao Mei learns of the breach, she immediately calls Jintai. She tries bribing Jintai with money, but he refuses. He then offers her a deal of his own, in which he promises to hand over their data in exchange for Fang. Left with no choice, Xiao Mei accepts the deal and arranges to meet him in the East City building at midnight. After arriving at the location, Xiao discovers that a lady has arrived to retrieve the boy. Enraged, she fires some warning rounds at the duo and threatens Jin Tai to reveal himself. When he doesn't show up, Xiao Mei orders her men to kill Min while avoiding any harm to Fang as they need his heart. Soon, the mother-son duo are surrounded by enemies, but just then, Jin Tai eliminates them all from a distance. Following this, Xiao Mei and Jin Tai start their sniping battle while Fang and Min try to flee. Unfortunately, Xiao Mei captures Min and ties her to a chair, turning her into the cover. With time running out, Jin Tai selects a position from which he has a clear shot. The duo then aim and fire at each other. Xiao Mei shoots at his chest, while Jin Tai shoots at the chair's leg, causing her to fall off the building and die. On the other hand, Jintai is able to survive because he had a bulletproof iron on his body. He tells Min to escape, but right then, his evil father, Ming, appears out of nowhere and kills her. When Jintai reaches the place, he can only witness Ming taking Feng away in his car. In the next scene, Ming arrives at the residence and begins preparing for the heart transplant. But before they can start, Jintai shoots through the building's bulletproof glass. Worried, Ming deploys three of his snipers to apprehend him and orders the rest of the team to guard the building. He monitors the shots to determine Jintai's location, but the latter confuses them with remote-controlled shots. Jintai, being the best sniper, dispatches all three of them, one after another. He then enters the building and kills all of Ming's men. He soon comes across Ming himself, but instead of killing him, he removes the armor and heads to free Fang. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Ming shoots Jintai from behind, but Jin does not attack in response. Seeing this, Ming inquires about why he's helping the boy, to which Jintai counters by asking why Ming saved him back then. This makes Ming speechless, and he is unable to shoot his own son. As Jintai walks away with Fang, Ming succumbs to his heart disease and dies. In the final scene, Jintai is seen dropping Fang off at school, and the little kid now refers to him as Dad, aka Snipe Daddy. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.